Does anyone remember that video on blend modes that I made back in like 2015 that people randomly seemed to like even though it basically amounted to me just saying mess around until you find something that looks good? Yeah, I try not to either. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about blend modes for real. But first, before we talk about blend modes properly, we are going to have to talk about alpha blending. Which is to say, what happens when you draw something with transparency? So, drawing multiple things on top of each other is one of those subjects that sounds like it should be pretty straightforward, but, as with most of the other things that I talk about on this YouTube channel, it can get pretty deep pretty quickly. So, I have here with me today a, uh, a couple sprites. We're gonna start with just some, some palletized sprites, uh, four colors. Four shades of red, four shades of green, I also have four shades of blue, but uh, that's not on the screen right now. And when you draw them one on top of the other, the pixels in the sprite of the thing that's drawn second just completely obscure the pixels in the sprite of the thing that's drawn first. And that's, that's pretty straightforward. You really don't have to expend much brain power thinking about how that works, right? Um, it helps that both of the sprites, the, uh, the alpha is 100%, and there's no transparency going on, there's nothing that would cause a, um, a merging of colors in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but if you did... But if you did have a, um, some amount of transparency going on, let's draw the second sprite at an alpha value of 0 0.5, or, uh, or about half. Then you would start to notice the ways in which the two colors are blended together. Since we are drawing a sprite with about 50% transparency, that means our final output color is going to be a combination of 50% of the, uh, the source color, 50% hey. of what's already there, and the way that works out here is that we're going to be taking uh, more or less the average of the two colors, and that's going to be our destination color. And I don't want anyone to come away from this thinking that um, alpha blending is just taking the average of the, uh, the source and the destination colors. It only works out like that in this case because, uh, because our, our transparency is 50%, so we are literally meeting in the middle. Uh, you, can, you can do the math, and uh, if I were to overlay this, uh, this green sprite on any of the other colored rectangles, and you would find that the, uh, the calculations add up. That was not supposed to come out sounding as funny as it did. You would find that taking the, uh, the average of the colors produces the, uh, the correct answer. Now, if I were to, instead of saying, uh, let's make the alpha 50%, let's make it 75%. And if I were to run the game now, uh, we would not have uh, exactly an average. We would have, instead, we would have a final color that is the sum of 75% of the, uh, the color that I'm drawing, so 75% of the green and 25% of the, um, the color that was already there. And if you've messed around with blend modes before, this is where words such as, uh, for example, source alpha and inverse source alpha might start to ring a bell, but I'm going to, I'm going to get to that later. And again, if you were to do the math, 75% of green is going to be a value of uh, more or less 0, uh, 192, and 0, and a 25% uh, of red is going to be a value of more or less uh, 64, 0, and 0. And if you were to add those together, the final output color that you would see would be, uh, what, what did I say, 64, 192, 0, which is, as we can, um, as my future self is hopefully going to be adding in, a, in post, uh, that is more or less the color that we see uh, when I overlay these two, these two rectangles on top of each other. And again, if I were to, if you were to do that same exercise with, um, with some of the other shades of these two rectangles, you would get the same, the same result if I were to overlay this, uh, this green sprite on one of these other colored bars in the background, again, you'll get more or less the same result. And by default, that's how color blending works. That's how color blending a game maker will work by default. If you have a, a image manipulation tool such as Photoshop or one of the other ones, uh, that is generally how your uh, default blending with transparency is going to work. And the, uh, the more mathematically inclined among you may start to think that this sounds an awful lot like the, uh, the lerp function in mathematics. So if you were to do linear interpolation between two color values, uh, if you have the source and the destination, uh, the, uh, the fractional amount that you would lerp from the source to the destination would just be the alpha value of the, uh, the destination. Hey. And I'm hesitant to say that that is the correct way to think about color blending, uh, more so than what I said earlier about uh, adding the source color multiplied by the, uh, the source alpha and adding that to the destination color multiplied by uh, 1 minus the uh, source alpha, but um, if it helps you, if it helps you visualize what's happening, then as far as I'm concerned, that, that, then that, that's just as well. So, again, that's how blending works by default, but there are a whole host of other ways that you can blend colors together, and we're going to start talking about that. I'm only going to talk about a few of them today. Uh, there's all kinds of other, um, settings that you can use in, 
um, in Game Maker in, in OpenGL or, or in um, another graphics API to blend colors together. And there's even more that you can do in shaders that I'm sure I'm going to talk about eventually. But first, uh, in Game Maker, I'm going to just uh, go into the into the draw event of this of this test object, and I'm going to say GPU set blend mode. And the uh, the GPU set blend mode function takes a couple of a uh, takes one of a couple uh, blend modes constants. Um, the ones that we are concerned with are BM normal. And if you, uh, if you hit BM underscore and hit control space, you can see that there's a bunch of them. But the, uh, the simple ones that we're going to deal with today are going to be BM normal, BM add, BM subtract, and BM max. Uh, BM normal, as you can probably infer, is the, uh, the default blending mode. That is what I talked about uh, in, the, in the first part of this video, where we um, just basically lurped between uh, the source and the destination color based on the, the alpha value of the, um, the source. What if instead I instead set GPU set blend mode BM underscore uh, add for the sake of argument? And if you've ever used blend modes in something like Photoshop before, you probably have a pretty good idea of what uh, additive blending, what the additive blend mode is going to end up looking like. And the name itself is a pretty pretty good giveaway of um, of exactly how the uh, the source and the destination colors are going to be combined together when we draw something to the screen. And uh, first, let me set the uh, the alpha of the uh, the green rectangle to to one, so that we don't have to deal with transparency yet. And then let me run the game. And if your guess is going to be that uh, the uh, the two the color values of what you're trying to draw on top of each other are just added together uh, verbatim with no um with no source alpha or one minus source alpha, hey. then you would be correct. And when I overlay these two uh, these two sprites on top of each other. Uh, that is what happens. So the uh, the red, the 100% red and the 100% green, uh, when you add those together, 255, 0, 0, and 0, 255, 0, uh, the color that you get is going to be um, 255, 255, 0. And if you, uh, if you evaluate that red, green, and blue uh, color combination, uh, you're going to get yellow, just like pure yellow, which is, uh, which is exactly what we see in the upper left corner of the sprite. Um, if I were to... Um, let's say combine this one. Uh, the one, the square on the bottom is, I want to say um, 0, 096, 0 as its color, as its color value. And if you add that to 255, 0, 0, you're going to get uh, 255, 96, 0. And uh, once again, if you evaluate that as a color, you're going to get this, which again, looks pretty dang close to what we see on the screen. And then if I were to, if I were to move my cursor all the way over here to the, uh, to the white strip in the background, then the, uh, the thing is going to disappear because uh, white is already 255, 255, 255. That is the highest that any of those color values can go. And if I were to, uh, if I were to add anything to that, if I were to add any color of green to that, then we're just going to, we're, we're going to keep having white. You can't go any higher than that. So the, uh, the green palette sprite effectively disappears. If you, uh, if you were to play with alpha with this, and I'm not going to spend too much time dealing with alpha in, um, for the rest of this video, I think, because if you if you followed so far, uh, you can um, you can do pretty much the same uh, calculation with alpha uh, for the rest of the blend modes I'm going to talk about, and you um, you should be able to predict what's going to happen. So if I were to draw the screen sprite at 50% alpha, then we are going to have instead of adding um, pure green like 100% green to this red sprite over here, uh, we are going to multiply all of the um, all the colors in the the sprite that we're drawing with the blend mode by that alpha, and we're going to uh, we're going to instead add those values together. So instead of adding um, red to green, we're going to add uh, red, z which is again two fifty five zero zero to um, let's call it half green, so zero one twenty seven zero, and the uh, the result of that is going to be uh, sort of a sort of an orangey color, I think. I I would certainly call what we see right now an orangey color, and that is going to be uh, two fifty five one twenty seven zero as its uh, as its color value. And uh, once again, if you uh, if you do that same calculation, multiplying the uh, multiplying the green sprite by its alpha uh, before adding them together, then that's more or less going to be the colors that you get. I shouldn't say it's more or less going to be the colors that you get. It's going to be exactly the colors that you get. All right, so that's a uh, so that's additive blending. Subtractive blending. Subtractive blending is uh, 
Once again, if you've used something like Photoshop and you've used uh, subtractive blend modes in Photoshop, you have a pretty good idea of how this is going to work. Uh, once again, the name is a pretty, pretty good giveaway about what it's going to do. And that is going to be that instead of adding the color that you draw to, um, to the color that's already there, and I, uh, I really want to make this 100% alpha. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about alpha for the rest of the video, I think, because I don't want this to go on for too long, for, for longer than it already has. And um, you should be able to figure out what's, what its deal is by now. Uh, we're going to instead take the color that's already there and subtract the, um, the color that we're drawing. So if I were to, instead of, uh, instead of moving the palette sprite over onto the, uh, to the left side of the of the window. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it over the white side. White color, you know what the red, green, and blue values are for that by now. And if I were to, instead of adding anything, if I were to subtract uh, green, so if I were to subtract uh, 0, 2, 55, 0 from white, then what you would be left with is going to be this uh, this wonderful magenta color, which is a, a color code of about 255. I keep saying about. I need to be more decisive about these things. Uh, the, the color code for magenta is going to be uh, 255, 0, 255. So it's going to be red and blue, but no green. And uh, instead of adding color to what's already there, we are removing color. If I were to draw instead of the, uh, the green sprite, so SPR with the, the green hex code, uh, if I were to draw instead, for example, the, uh, the blue sprite, uh, we would get something more like yellow, because yellow is going to be... Um, 100% red, 100% green, and zero blue, because we are subtracting the blue. Um, if I were to uh, move this, uh, move this sprite over over one of the other sides. Uh, again, max math checks out. If I were to draw the uh, the red sprite, then we would have a what would we have? A cayenne, I want to say, is, y is yellow, is um like the removal of red. Yeah, cayenne over here on the white half. And if I were to move this over to um to the red square on the left side, uh, red minus red, anything minus itself is gonna be zero, and that is the uh, that is the color that we get. And you can see the uh, the darker red squares, anything that goes below uh, zero is just gonna be basically clamped at zero. Anything, if you were to do added blending that goes above 255 is just gonna be clamped at 255. This is how color blending of pigments work, by the way. If you've, uh, if you've ever played with uh, crayons or paint or anything like that as a kid, and you've combined them in different ways to make different colors, that works on a subtractive basis because pigments absorb light instead of emitting it the way computer screens do. And if anyone ever told you as a kid that the primary colors were red, yellow, and blue, uh, they were lying to you. The primary colors of pigment are cayenne, magenta, and yellow. Although to be fair to uh, to be fair to, to primary school teachers everywhere, that's probably easier to explain to a to a five year old than than all the math and everything. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go back to drawing the green sprite. Uh, lastly, we have BM underscore max. By the way, the exact equation for additive blending as far as like the graphics hardware is concerned is going to be this. And the exact equation for subtractive blending as far as the graphics hardware is concerned is going to be this. Again, I will talk about these advanced blending equations at some other point in time, but, but I know that my YouTube channel is followed by a bunch of nerds who are just sitting on the edge of their seats who are eagerly waiting to see if I'm going to forget to mention that or not. But there's the equations. BM underscore max, I can't say I see used very often in the wild, the way that I do with obviously normal blending is everywhere because that's kind of the default. Additive blending is used a lot when you want to make something look like it's glowing because it um, it brightens pixels because it adds colors together. Uh, subtractive blending is not probably as common as additive blending, but you do see it sometimes when people want to create masks that they can draw on. I really don't see the, uh, the maximum blending used very often. Um, its name is is not really so much of a giveaway as the other ones are, um, and perhaps it's a little bit misleading because it sounds like it should do one thing. It sounds like it should, it should take the uh, the maximum values of each color channel of what you're of whatever you're drawing. Okay, I could not find a use for max blending that did not look like utter garbage. So for the sake of speeding this thing along a little bit, I'm gonna say that if you really want to play around with it yourself, feel free. But for the sake of time, and because I don't think I've ever seen anyone using it for real, I'm just going to cut this whole section out. I'll touch on it lightly next time when I talk about the extended blend modes. So there are other ways that you can combine colors in Game Maker, and indeed in other computer graphics systems that you might use. Uh, if you type GPU set blend mode, you see that there's a, there's actually a couple, a couple other functions that you can use for uh, for blending. One of them is GPU set blend mode extended. This is going to be um, this is going to take two arguments. 
instead of just the the simple BM, normal BM, uh, add, whatever, uh, the, the, the blend mode types that we talked about today, this is going to take some of the more advanced blending settings. Um, if any of these in this list look familiar to uh, anything that I mentioned when I was talking about how alpha is blended um, earlier, then uh, that is not an accident, but I think that's going to be a subject for another day. And then, of course, there are, uh, there are other fun, fun things you can do in shaders when it comes to blend modes. And um, if you want to emulate some of the more complicated uh, Photoshop filters, for example, uh, the more complicated Photoshop blend modes, then you would need to use a shader. But that's going to do it for me for today. Uh, if, you want the, uh, if you want the code for this, there's not much, but I will make it available, I think. Um, if you want to play around with the setup with the, uh, the ducklings and the palette sprites and, and, and all that, uh, feel free. Link to the GitHub repository will be in the video description. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this. I like to talk about the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, uh, fun, fun 3D things, fun graphical things, and that kind of thing. And also, I am currently working on a, a Let's Make a Game project on the side. So if any of that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You can see your name in the credits at the end of every one of these videos, and about once a month I post a preview of my future plans. And if you wanted to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful. If blend modes are something that you've been vaguely aware of in, in Game Maker, but you've never really known what to do with them, then hopefully this video was helpful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Kiexi, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Then Nothing Happened, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.